Welcome, Full Streaks oh, yeah. Podcast, episode 15. We have a guest. This is Gadsden. You can find him at Gadsden up, TTV. Um, I'm going to let him plug all his stuff real quick, just so it's at the beginning and not, you know, got to well, wait till the end of here. So go for Lord, it, man. I, was, I, I didn't even know I was doing a social media plug here. All right. So uh, I guess the main live streams happen at uh, Twitch and YouTube. Gadsden TTV on Twitch. Gadsden, is it just Gadsden or Gadsden YT? On, I think it's just Gadsden on, on YouTube. I got my name on YouTube. Someone stole it. It's nice. On Twitch. It's also Gadsden on TikTok, which is where I have the biggest following. Uh, I also got some Twitter, not so much on Facebook. It's Gadsden TV on Twitter, trying to get that, trying to hit that 50 follower mark. I'm approaching it. We got, we, right and I got a giveaway going on for a six terabyte hard drive with external case for UPC users. And I think that's the end of my plug. Okay. <laughs> right on, man. Definitely go check him out. See if he's uh, for you. Um, so let's just get to know you real quick. What, how long have you been playing games? Oh my god! Isn't that forever. <laughs> that's same here. Yeah, that's yeah, absolutely. That's, I've just I mean, been when you, forever. I mean, in our in our age group, I guess you could say. I mean, video games, uh, console in home video games really took off. What would you say? With like the Atari and then the S, uh, the yeah. NES and SNES happened. Sure. And I mean, at that point, I had a brother who's six years older than I have a brother who's six years older than me. So we had an Atari in the house, and his right. main system was the NES when I was born and growing up. So I've had a controller in my hand since I was like three years old. Sure. And then the Genesis is the system that I really grew up with playing Sonic and Mortal yep. Kombat oh, yeah. and all that, you know, um, then he got the Sony PlayStation. So I was a PlayStation guy for a long time before I ever even had an Xbox in my house. That's and then I had a me. PlayStation <laughs> and an Xbox. I PC games from, I would say 2000 to 2006. Um, and then re re entered PC gaming in 2019. Yeah, with Valorant, because that's where I met you with Sandy and all that. I miss Sandy. Right on. Um, yeah. So I think yeah. that's I started PC gaming in 2019 for Modern Warfare. Um, that's just when I built my PC or I bought my first PC, and that's really mm -hmm. what I played on. So yeah, it's kind of pretty much the same story. I mean, I grew up with a, a PS1 and we were PlayStation people for a while and I didn't get my first Xbox until I was 18 and I got a 360 and I'm like, this is okay. Played that for a while and, and then switched to PC for when, I don't know, Call of Duty's always been my main game. So when they finally really put effort into the PC side of it, I was like, it's maybe it's time to switch because more people are playing PC and, you know, going that way. Um. So what games do you typically play? So, I mean, we're Eve Rock, uh, Apex, Call of Duty, uh, Rocket League, mainly in the server. Right on. Uh, and on stream. But we also throw, we've been throwing in Minecraft this week on trying to shake things up and take things a little easy because yeah. we sweat so hard on these shooters. Like we just need like a mental health break, you know? Sure. It's good to just take that, take that time to just take it easy on yourself, you know? Catch and that is what Rocket League out. is for me. Yeah. Oh, I know. Rocket League is so much fun. Absolutely. And I, I play a, a card game. I played Legends of Runeterra, and it's that's a it's just a good that. break. It's it's cool. Yeah, it's I, I used to take my break with Magic, but then mm -hmm. it just got too expensive. Yeah. Magic is very so expensive. wait, Runeterra, is that like Hearthstone? Or it's is that... it's similar. It's a it's a card, um, like a turn based card game. It's just based in the League of Legends world. It uses their champions and and characters okay. and their lore and everything. It's all inter intertwined, which is a really cool thing they did over at Riot. I think that that was a really neat thing. That's um, so Call of Duty. Yeah, you said you played. I I that's my main game. That's typically all that I do play. What? How do you feel about Call of Duty this year? Um, I'm I'm liking it overall. I was bitching a little bit about the interface, the user interface. I, think I was going to ask you about designs. that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if if CJ mentioned my. I don't know if CJ. Did you hear me talking about it today? I was. I, I wasn't. Yeah, Drew was watching you. I was, watching I was out you. doing housework <laughs> for like the last forty five minutes because I didn't know anything about it. I just knew Damn. that we uh, we'll get to the aim assist thing and the controller thing, but that's all I knew of you. So I'm like, let me just see what this guy's about. You know, just watch a stream for a little bit and and check him out. And I saw you talking about yeah. the interface and because I had asked other people like if they had issues with it too, like with they. I don't have an issue. It's just the horizontal is just weird and different. They give exactly. you a, a big view of your gun, which I do like. But yeah. it was made for mobile. 
which is it's why we have a scrolling because we never really had a scroll before everything's just been in frame fully um so it it makes it a little clunky but it's just just different i think i don't dislike it i would say i think the horizontal setup over the vertical setup was a bad choice and uh I mean, again, going back to like what we have grown with over the past, let's say, two decades, sure. right? Um, let's take the friends list screen, which was the first thing that jumped out at me. Every friends list we've ever had from MySpace to Twitter to Facebook yeah, like to LinkedIn to exactly because the lists are list. it's just aesthetically pleasing and it's easy to read from the eye because every time sure. we read a book, it's, you know, left, right, top, bottom. Mm hmm. And this thing that they got with this scroll feature where you have like names like flying off the screen and you got to scroll whichever yeah. way. And then and then also like it plugs in random places like you have one friend in a party or you have two friends in a party. Like you'll yeah. have that box and then I've a couple friends and then you have two friends in a party and then more friends. I'm like, what? what is going on? Just have the friends list. Yeah, please. I like that they and then show it makes the parties. Matches. Oh, sorry. No, you're good. Say that again. I I like that they show the parties though. I think that that's cool that you can go and look at who's already partied up, and that you can just join straight to that party. Uh, we never really got to see like we would see that they were available to be joined, but you couldn't really see who they were with. Like I don't think they really showed that before, at least not to the, with the clarity that this one does. So oh, I know with uh the xbox friends list it would always show you who's in a voice party with each other mm -hmm. and normally that would show you who's in that game right um but i do like the friends list features that you guys are speaking on yeah they they do bring a little bit more to um i guess if you see four people and you go they have room let me whisper to them let me see if i, I can get in with them yeah it, it's easier than having a generic friends list that just shows you that they're in a game right i like that that feature overall i wonder how long it's going to be before we can like spectate that they're in a game like you got a friend that's in lsilo playing search and there's round two and you can like watch their game while they're playing i wonder yeah. how far away we are from that see i know interesting I know with Counter Strike they had that feature. Yeah. And it was really nice to see your friends that were probably like two or three, you know, competitive ranks above you, see how their teams played. Sure. I think it's just I, that was watching fun. your friends, you know? Just yeah. just watch it because that's I don't really mind when I die in search because I kinda like watching y'all play and how y'all play and I think it's neat learning the intricacies of like how you think where why you should push this and when and I think it's really neat. I I like learning that stuff though. Well, strategy is a huge part of the BR thing. Strategy, communication, placement, positioning, and it's uh, it's tough uh, for guys like us who are into the streaming and content creation thing to find the time to sit down and watch people at the top of their game. Mm -hmm. You know, playing, carving out that hour or two hours or three hours to like sit down and like if you're an IGL watching like the best IGL like players in the game, like Imperial Hal or something like that, just mm -hmm. play for three hours and like, oh, what can I learn from this guy? It's hard to carve out that kind of time, but. It's uh, yeah. it's definitely useful, definitely rewarding. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is okay. it is tough, especially when it just it just takes time to edit and and like you got so yeah. much of your own stuff that you're trying to do. It's it's very time consuming overall. What's what you got, CJ? So I'm gonna ask this question, and it's gonna sound a little little weird, guys. Okay. Do you enjoy competitive over casually playing? Or do you enjoy just being able to relax with your friends and not care about the win or loss? Which I, one do you which one do you go after more? I know I know the answer that you're probably gonna tell me, but I, I want you to really think really quick about you you are playing Warzone. Let's say it's me, you, Loki, and someone else. Just maybe Drew, right? Mm -hmm. We're all just playing, we're all having a good time, we all are just vibing. Right? Are you going after the win, or are you going after just the the sheer fun aspect of it with your friends? So it depends on the game and the game mode, right? So if we're well, we'll I'll stick with Call of Duty, right? If we're doing Warzone, I'm playing competitively. I want the dub. If we're playing DMZ, 
I'll only take DMZ really seriously if I if my stash is crapped out. Like if I mm. literally have basically no guns and I have like no bag, no and the, the, going in with one armor plate, you know. Sure. At that point, I'm like, let's actually get the X fill so we can build our stash back up, build our keys back up. But I mean, if my if my stash is comfortable, then I'm I'm playing casually. Apex is basically I'm going for the win, virtually all the time. It's very nine times out of a hundred. Pretty much. Rocket League these days, I'm taking it easy. Like I've. I have a decent enough command at a champ level now where I can go into most games and perform pretty well and win probably two games out of three every for the most part. Sure. You yeah. know? Okay. But okay. Rocket League's the fun one. Um, but yeah, as of late, my general mindset has been I want to take it easy because I've been stressing myself out too much a little bit and uh, I want to chill on sweating out. But more often than not, like I want the win. I want to be better as a gamer and yeah that's that's really uh, like most of the time i want to play competitively unless i'm i'm creating that that chill kind of vibe sure. and environment okay that's uh, that's actually a very well put thought out answer i thought it was just going to be a quick no win only get the fuck out of here <laughs> but i'm glad to be wrong about certain things <laughs> Well, I didn't so, know if you wanted the nuance or not, but I felt like it was probably important since we're ha- going to have a long-form discussion here. Yeah, no, no. The, the actual thought process behind it is what I know uh, Drew is looking for. Uh, yeah, that's what I like. He, Drew really likes the methodical thinking aspect of interviews, I guess. I just like seeing how people think and, like, I like when people have reasoning behind their thoughts, not just that they have this idea and have no reasoning behind it right so the ability for someone to articulate their reasoning is is big for me that's just that's one of the things that i like um and it's the same thing with like rocket league too like if we're gonna go into rocket league if we're just doing casuals i'm screwing around i'm not caring so much about the wind i'm like i'm thinking about how can i improve my reads off the wall how can i improve my ceiling shots how can i set up my my flipper sets better it's less about the win and more about improving myself personally as a gamer. Like if we're going to go into to comp and I know we want wins because we're grinding those champ rewards or I'm trying to get from champ to GC and, mm-hmm. and play a different, you know, caliber of player. Or if we're in tournaments or something like that, like I, I like in those scenarios, like I want to win, but if we're in casuals, if we're doing extra modes, like things like that, like I'm, I'm just chilling. So it all depends on, you know, what game mode we're hopping in. And I'm trying to mix in more of those casual settings. Cause I know like, I don't think a lot of people who are in the community want to hop into games with me if I'm sweating my ass off 100% of the time when I know that like there are times when they just want to take it easy too. So I'm trying to get into the habit of taking it easy myself. Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what is your next question, Drew? Because I might have a, I figured a, we another... would go from that to the talking about the controllers. Ooh. Do you okay. Want, do you want okay. to ask it's probably, good, it's probably a good segue. I think it's a good it, it's, segue. It's a pretty good yeah. segue. Okay. So, so let me just make sure that I am understanding your thought here. You What you said was that there should not be controllers on PC FPS games or shooter games just overall. Yeah, unless they can figure out a way to fix this aim assist and make it more balanced. So but... why do you believe aim assist is overpowered? I guess is my oh. first question. I'll get, I'll do I'll do two um, things and and CJ I know I'm uh, I'm gonna probably touch on a lot of the things we talked about yesterday in short but um, one I didn't cover yesterday with you and I want to bring that up so um, so the first thing I'll probably do three all right so stage one um, one of the things I brought up with CJ recently was that I think that at lower levels of gameplay like in in terms of skill right. Mm-hmm. Um, the way I put it was in terms of Apex, the people at the skill level of rookie, bronze, silver, gold, so mm-hmm. sort of in that area. I don't think they really have <clears throat> a command of the game enough for aim assist to really be overpowered. Let's okay. call it the bottom 50% as a matter of fact. I guess that's probably the, okay. the better way to put it because the bot- that's roughly the bottom 50% of skill level. Once you hit the top 50%, people start having like a really good command of the game whether it's mm-hmm. just aim movement positioning gameplay understanding strategy all that when you tie basically 
software to your human ability, it becomes exponentially harder as an M and K player to overcome that software aspect because you're basically fighting a computer. And the reason I came to this realization, because if you, if you were to go back, I, probably those streams don't exist, but I'll admit to it here. I would say six months ago, I had a completely different opinion. Okay. My opinion was aim assist exists to compensate for your thumb crossing over a dead zone. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not that powerful. That was pretty much my gist of it. Sure. But as soon as I got into high plat and diamond lobbies, what I was realizing is the second I was getting into close range combat fights, I was losing way more often in high plat and diamond lobbies and even against masters players than I was against any caliber of player before. And I was like, well, why is that? Then I realized I was facing way more people who were using controller. I'm like, I'm getting demolished within these 20, 25 meter fights and especially within 10 meter fights. Sure. People are not missing shots at all. Meanwhile, I have the human element. I have this reaction time that I have to deal with when people change directions. My crosshair is going to go past them. I have to overcompensate. They're going to cross over again. Meanwhile, they literally have the ability of software to magnetize their crosshair onto me. They are not missing shots in their mag. I'm getting melted by people on controller at these levels. Okay. Which brings me to my second point. Uh, I'm not the only person who realized this. So what I brought up to CJ yesterday was back in October, there was a poll of the then top 27 PC pred players on what interface or input they used for Apex. Mm -hmm. Two of them were unconfirmed, and of the remaining 25, 22 pred players were on controller. Even Imperial Hal made the switch over because he's realizing how overpowered aim assist is uh, for controller on, on these video games. Okay. And then the third thing is I was actually on with, uh, I have a pred, a, like two or three pred friends in, in my discord. Uh, one of them's uh, my friend Gav. Uh, as of like two weeks ago, he was the number 52 pred on Xbox. Xbox. Yeah. Nice. And he's like, yo, Gav, you want a 1v1? I'm like, yeah, sure. Like, I want to I wanna keep testing myself. I'm trying new sensitivities out to see what works. Sure. We hop in. When he had aim assist on, he absolutely shit on me. 20 games out of 20. I did not win one single game when he had aim assist on. I came close once. Okay. When he turned it off, I took seven out of eight. So because he's like really, really high skilled, he took that one game even without aim assist. But I won handily the other seven games when he turned aim assist off. My argument would be that if aim assist were fair and balanced, that you would see people of that higher skill level, it should be roughly a 50-50 split with some margin of error. Let's call it okay. 5%, 10%, okay. something like that. Like if I were to go up against 10 diamond level players that played M and K and 10 diamond level players controller, if controller were balanced and fair, I should win roughly half the time on both of them, more or less. But that's not the case. If I'm going up against controller players mm. within those close range fights with BRs, as you know, like basically demand like 99% of your fights are going to be won and lost in close range combat. I'm not. I'm losing basically 100% of my fights against controller players in, in close range. So that's okay. my tirade against okay. aim assist. So what I will say is that controller is easier to use. I feel like we can agree on that, and which is why I feel like you have more people switching to it. But mouse and keyboard has a higher skill ceiling. The, the best controller player will never touch the best mouse and keyboard player. You just, the things that are negative on a controller outweigh the things that are positive with aim assist at the very tippy top level. So there's a higher skill ceiling with mouse and keyboard. You're able to be better. This is just easier to use. That's why I don't think it's that unbalanced. It's just easier to use. You're able to get to the same level and exceed it on mouse and keyboard because you don't have to cross over the delay. You don't have spots that lose aim assist. You don't have, everything is all hardwired through your brain, right? That's all, it's all hardwired how you play versus the software where you lose aim assist. If you have two people, you don't always get to choose which one that you fight. It, it'll split them and, and, and it'll carry your aim one way or the other. And if you're not thinking the same way as the aim assist pulls, then you like you lose that anyways. I can definitely say it's easier, 
but mouse and keyboard has a higher ability to be better. You're able to do much more wild things on mouse and keyboard. Oh, yeah. Especially with flicks I mean, I, and like wide range shit, too. Sorry. I think ahead. to some degree it's probably true. Um, but given I, I would want to see data on it, you know, like like that guy going going and finding out what the inputs of the top 27 players or 25 players are. I'd like to Apex. note on that. I would love to see that across the board. Like, what are the Overwatch players doing on PC? What are the COD players doing on PC? What are the Fortnite players doing on PC? Controller like, I on really... COD. Overwatch Probably, is mouse right? and keyboard. No, it's definitely controller on COD. It's, it's a 100% on COD. That's confirmed. Like, they, yeah, there is no mouse controller. and keyboard player on COD. Now, that, now that's hold in on, the top, hold like, in the top, that's, top? Are you, in the, are you in the professional Call of Duty. Like, in yeah, the okay, talking, of the league. If you're, because they if don't you're allow it. Call of Duty League. Yeah. They don't. No, no. there. They just don't. There is no option to play mouse and keyboard, and be. And I think it's because the majority of the top are on controller, but the ones that are going to be better than them are on mouse and keyboard. So it allows the top to kind of even out, and you not have. You got a team of five mouse and keyboard players at the very top of their craft. That that's what that's where me has saying they mouse and keyboard has a higher skill ceiling. That's where that comes in. Now, just to clarify, we're talking about the multiplayer side of Call of Duty, not uh, the BR. There's a lot of pro BR players that do use keyboard and mouse, but it's still the preference to use controller in Warzone. I think because it's easier. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, coming from me, I'm, I'm a person that can use both. I prefer a controller. I prefer it's being easier able to use. It's also like I have faster reaction time with my thumb than i do my entire arm hold on and it's also because as you said we've been playing for fucking 20 years yeah. right so, with a controller so like most of us that never really played on mouse and keyboard are just on controller so to say that there should be no controllers in fps pc games really cuts out a lot of the community and it cuts out That's a lot of a saying. lot of friendships it cuts out cross play and it just doesn't make sense on the business side either to just not allow the most used input to just be like, no, these shouldn't be here. So I was just, I, that's why I was like, I don't understand that take at all. Like just generally for, for gaming, it's just not, it's a negative impact to take away controller input on FPS or on shooter PC the, games. Cause, cause CJ brought that up yesterday. I do think it's a compelling argument, uh, the business aspect and the playing with friends aspect. Like I definitely get that. Um, my take is more focusing on just the competitive aspect and the sheer imbalance that I believe that it creates. Um, now, I mean, whether or not, you know, they can fix this or they choose to like dial down the power of aim assist in, well, I mean, EA never will because it's EA. Like, let's face it. They don't, yeah. they don't really do much, to, but they cater don't really to the do pros. Much. They don't. They, they I mean, Infinity the Ward's the same way. They really don't do much for the community unless it benefits their pockets. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I how, mean how long has the community in Apex been asking for audio fixes? And they'll never do it until they create another Apex. And they won't do that until they start losing money or stop making money, at least on the current Apex as it is. Let, let's but, save the whole audio talk for another guest appearance, because <laughs> I know you both probably have the same opinions on certain things. And I want to hear that separately in another another time, personally. Yeah, I think. I'm I don't know what you mean. Well, I suppose my, sounds, my question footsteps, audio, Whoa. all that stuff. Oh, yeah. A topic for another time. <laughs> <laughs> it can that be. could be it, it can be. But it, it well, if we're going to agree, it's going to be pretty quick. Yeah. So so. My so I want to I want to backtrack to. um. So we were saying that the skill ceiling is higher. The ca capability of things that, you know, mouse and keyboard players can do is greater mm -hmm. than than what uh, controller players can do in terms of uh, Apex. I would lean towards. Yes. Um, I mean, you look at someone like Lemonhead and he's cracked out of his goddamn mind. Uh, he's on MNK. Right. The tap strafes that you can do, you can only do on keyboard. Um, unless you have a macro for your controller. Which you can only do on Steam. Steam. Unless you download Anti-Micro, which is a third-party program. And I don't know if that interface even works on Origin. I think it might. Or you get a Cronus and hook it up and download their pack. Yikes. 
and that's a whole other thing. It just thing. sounds like so yeah. much to do to just play the game. Right. Yeah, I mean, you can yeah. also, another benefit of keyboard and mouse players on certain games is not only can you have one keyboard, but you can have another keyboard for other macros that are on the ground, like a foot pedal and stuff like that. That's what I'm using, as I use a foot pedal to crouch and to activate certain, like an ultimate, or, no, I do tactical you had ability it. and crouch. Oh, I thought Apex. you also had had it for medkits. No. No, because, okay. um, so... Push, I use a, push, one push. of those three foot pedals that you can get. It's typically for like driving games. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they bind to A, B, and C. So I can't bind to A because that's my strafe left, obviously, because that's the movement key. So literally, I rip that one off yeah. <laughs> because I hate accidentally you don't hitting hit, it. Yeah, you don't hit it. So I rip it off. I throw it in the freaking garbage. So all I have is B and C. So my B is my crouch, and then my C on the right hand side is my tactical or yeah, my tactical ability. Mm -hmm. So okay. if I'm like Pathfinder, I'm grappling. If I'm Wraith, I'm phasing out. Um, but my my heel keys are like four, five, six, seven in Apex, or plating is just four in Call of Duty. Um, but uh, but yeah, like it is pretty cool to have like the pedal because it frees up a finger from doing an extra thing. You know, it's one less thing to think about. You can just tap your foot and, and be yeah. on the go. That, but I mean, if you're playing what a on back kit does mm -hmm. for a controller, if you if you retroactively think about it, you're not yes. moving your thumb over to jump. You're you're just using this right. but i mean you could also use pedals with your controller too no right? you cannot people i've, I can't, I've heard of people you doing can't that you can't blend mouse and keyboard and controller it doesn't mesh apex is different because apex well, okay. you can call of duty is the oh, only apex. thing i know about yeah call of duty on call of... okay no no with apex instead of having this defined as what it, an x input mm -hmm. sure. it would be defined as a keyboard or a mouse mm, okay so you would still be able to use foot pedals and all that, but then you would lose aim assist, which is a big no-no to controller right. players. Yeah. So, but again, do, do we know how that works on Overwatch or Fortnite by any chance? We should have had an Overwatch and Fortnite player in here so they could shed some light on how those games work. Uh, Fortnite, no. Overwatch, no. Yeah. It, you get because I've accidentally been on mouse and keyboard and like grab my controller and I'm like, well, hold on, what are we doing? And then I got to play on mouse and keyboard and get fucking rolled <laughs> yeah um what so about aim assist your opinion is it's too strong yes at, six, at the very least six, on apex six months ago you thought that it was okay because you had to cross a dead zone well, because like and like I was saying, like this the skill level of players in the bottom fifty percent just it's they're not powerful enough to to really take advantage of the aim assist to the point where it's where it's overpowered and and ultimately unfair. Okay. Um. But what I would say is what I was going back is what I wanted to backtrack to before is we were saying like the skill level is higher on M and K. I would counter that with that stat point that's saying then why are 22 of the 25 top preds yep. controller but then also i would ask let's just even if we said for the sake of argument okay like aim assist at least on apex is too strong what are the alternatives to making it fair and balanced where it would be 50 percent of the time you know you're winning sure. you're losing within a margin of error so for the majority of people using a controller I think that just is naturally because more people use a controller than mouse and keyboard. I do believe that it's, there's so many more people using controllers than mouse and keyboard. I think that plays a lot into it and the fact that it's just easier. It's easier to get to, say, 80% and when nobody's really reached 100% of their full potential, right? It's easier to get to, say, 80% on controller where PC player or mouse and keyboard can get to, say, 90 and and like where a controller is inhibited there that's just easier to use to be at a higher level but they will still lose to the highest level highest level controller is still going to lose the highest level mouse and keyboard just because of the the faster reactions you can do the the dead zone you cross over the if you lose aim assist because we have a lot of spots in like call of duty which is where my realm basically is in where we lose aim assist where like we you get nothing at all and you're literally playing without aim assist until you get past whatever graphic decided to not allow you to have aim assist see the best part is about aim assist especially thinking about it as a call of duty player is 
I noticed you lose a lot more aim assist at a further further distance, right? Well, it's As a smaller all range. object. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It basically breaks off in because I was testing it in fire range the other day. It diminishes slightly from 15 to 25 meters, and then basically drops off exponentially after 25 meters. There's basically so, no aim assist after 25. So, the inverse to that in Apex, when I played Apex there for those two months, I felt like I had more aim assist at a distance than I did up close. Really. So yeah. is it maybe just Apex that it's really like a problem? It's it's super strong in Apex. I'll give it that. Okay. Like it's I heard strong. it was strong in COD too, but I I I haven't really so played I, I long heard enough to know. Your dude talk about like the Black Ops setting. I remember in your okay. stream he talked. He said that the Black Ops setting was strong. Well, they nerfed that. And oh yeah, absolutely. That, that one got nerfed into the ground to where it's not even worthwhile to use anymore. Um. Oh, yes, you got but, a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> but i don't think that it being overpowered in one game say i give you apex i don't think that that is like let's not allow pc shooters to have controllers i think that that's i think that's a far cry from yeah because what, say yeah. say the bottom 50 percent of aim assist users are, are not able to use the aim assist to make it overpowered that's still the majority of people playing the game I'm just saying well, that they shouldn't um, not be allowed is what I'm saying. Like they shouldn't have not have the option to use controller. So you're both on PC. Correct. Yep, obviously. Um now CJ, I if I remember correctly, you haven't tried Super People yet. Drew, no, have I have. you tried you yeah, have yeah, no, oh, we, you both we, have tried we, Super People. Yeah, yeah, we both played together. So what did you guys think of Super People? It's PUBG with extra steps. <laughs> Apparently there's a huge rework coming uh next month they didn't want to release it. apparently it's ready they did not want to release and compete with the the uh the war zone release so oh, they're sitting on it they sat on it for an extra two months i think that's a good call yeah but apparently it's getting hugely simplified but beyond that uh the reason i bring super people up is because it has no controller in inter interface yes. right now this ties into two things right i think it plays into one thing you guys were saying about how without the controller interface it will probably limit the community because controller players aren't gonna play it right there's no console I've version tried. right now I yeah, there's no security. console version <laughs> not work it didn't work for you i got rolled man i got absolutely smoked because i just i have such little time in mouse and keyboard that when i'm forced to do it like i'll do it on hunt showdown as well is something that i'll use mouse and keyboard for and it's just i get smoked not I don't think it's because of aim assist. I think it's just the un mouse and keyboard's unnatural to me. Like I don't I misclick and I like don't know my key all my key binds and everything. Like so I definitely think that that's part of the issue. But I don't think that the reason I that I would do better is aim assist. I just don't think that that's. Well, no, no, I know. I'm not, I'm not and I'm not um, you know, insinuating that uh, at all. But the reason I I bring that up is because there was actually a post, um. So I was active in the Discord, I was active in the forums because, um, you know, unlike these big developers, Wonder People is a smaller developer and being that they're trying to really, you know, work hard on this game and, and put something out that can compete and have like a corner in this industry, they're really listening to the feedback that the community is bringing them. Mm. There was a post that someone said like, there should be a controller interface because you're basically cutting out a whole bunch yeah. of potential players. But the thing is, a lot of people like overwhelmingly voted down this post. And I don't think it's because this take is necessarily wrong. What I think is that I think there are a lot of MNK players out there who are truly sick of the overpowered nature of, of aim assist and are happy that super people is a haven from that. Because when it comes down to it, when you put yourself on a mouse and keyboard, I think it is the truest test of your skill as a player because it is your physical and mental ability, your raw input into a mouse and keyboard. So what you put in, you get out. There is no help from software whatsoever. And it is you at your mouse and keyboard versus the person on the other screen on their mouse and keyboard. And it's just raw skill versus raw skill. And that's really the root of where I was saying that 
you know, at a competitive level, there should be no controller versus MNK. There should be se at least segregation, if not an outright just don't put the input like Super People does. Because when you're at the competitive level and you're trying to determine who is the best player, I think the only way to determine who is the number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and so on best player is to say, what is your raw skill level at this level you against that other person? No aim assist, no, obviously hacks, obviously, because that's yeah. another piece of software that, that you know, augments your, your raw natural ability. Like, all of that, to me, is software assisting the human element. And what I would want to see at a competitive level is just the human element. So I have a small rebuttal for that. Can sure. I say one thing? <laughs> he got dibs. He said he was our first. <laughs> that's, a big, that's a big difference from controller players shouldn't be able to play PC shooters. That's a far cry that, from yeah. that. That's a very yeah. far cry from that. You're saying like segregating versus not playing. Well, you're talking all, about specifically competitive and specifically segregating, and which I think most professional leagues do. Yeah, I mean, like Rainbow Six has two different leagues: uh, keyboard and mouse and controller, and they're all on PC. Yeah, I think so, that like I mean, legitimate leagues do. I don't really know how you would have a. There's too much RNG in BRs for it to be a like able to be a a real like competitive thing like in call like a like a call of duty or a siege or an overwatch i think there's too much rng to it to allow it to be to in that space with them that's because none mm -hmm. of them have have survived as competitive games The like the PUBG league has tanked what are some of the other ones fortnite I mean, has completely one, gone downhill the only one that's held try and uh, tried and true so far has been apex I think that I would be willing. I would be willing to back down and uh, we'll call it my my segregation take, right? That there should be like no, or I guess it'd be outright banning take, whatever. There should be no controller in PC shooters, right? I would I would totally back down on that if there were like actual steps taken to create an environment for M and K players that were essentially friendlier towards you know their experience, right? And by that I mean. Let's say um, instead of segregating controller from MNK, they segregated the lobbies themselves, right? Gave us the option for like when you get on Apex and you say Apex ranked, there's Apex ranked mixed where there you know there are controllers and MNK players in there, but there's an MNK only lobby. You know, I don't hate like the addition of a single input lobby i don't hate that i'm not i got no problem i don't, with that. I don't, I would, I don't hate that, that either would, yeah i would love that too i would love that because you know yeah, what's going to happen no is there are going to be people that would grind to masters and pred on m and k and then yeah. they would also go to the mix and be yeah. like i'm masters on mix i'm masters on m and k i dominate this shit. it doesn't matter if you're on controller or, or yeah. m and k whatever i dominate you i'm a masters player or the people who hit pred too they're going to do that yeah. i think the only thing is like yeah i don't uh i think that apex or I should say, like respawn on EA just wouldn't want to put the work in for the servers. It's it's just one of those things that they're, well, they're mean, not that, going that, to do. I think just, they should. That's more of a, a flip the switch type of thing, just like how they did with crossplay. And in, instead of turning cross crossplay on or off, just change change it to input because newer consoles allow keyboard and mouse support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, make it so, input based I mean, and not yeah console exactly. or like machine based. Oh, yeah, I don't hate so, that. I like. I'm. I got no problem with that. I would. I would so, love that. I would. So ba cause... backing up to what? Oh, let me get, let me get this out oh, before yeah, yeah, I yeah, forget. Thing. You were talking about having everybody on a competitive level, right? Even mouse and keyboard, right? Mm -hmm. Who is to say that having two people on controller isn't the same? Like you tell me, hey, I want to play you, mano y mano one-on-one -on -one. but you got to use keyboard an unfamiliar thing to me competitively you have a better advantage in the game than i do and vice versa if i tell you to use a controller you'd be a little lost right you should have seen me on controller at apex the other <laughs> no, i i imagine i imagine but i i understand what you're saying and that is why bringing up that swap input is a better idea than getting rid of crossplay altogether because that has helped so many games stay afloat. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, especially with games being free on Switch, like Rocket League. No offense, Rocket League would not be where it is today without crossplay. At or all. probably with, or being with free. going free as well. Yeah. Yeah, or, or being, being free. free. I heard that reinvigorated the game big oh, time. Big time. Oh, I've, I've had the game since 2015. And then since 2015, before Drew forced me to play the game with him and never played with me again, it was... We played two days ago. Yeah, but I'm talking a little while ago. Um, I only played that twice with an X. And then it went free, and then Drew started playing it. I played it with Drew, and then I found out you had it, and it just snowballed into meeting everybody and just playing that game. That is what crossplay does. You turn that shit off, we wouldn't know Loki. Yeah, I think it's we a bigger detriment to to not allow just for the gaming culture to yeah, not I, allow controllers on PC shooters. I think that's just it's too big a detriment. In a competitive space, I understand and I agree with you wanting a separate lobby. I and I'm all for that. I have no quarrels with that at all. It was just that was that was wild to me, man. Like, no, if you got a controller, you shouldn't be able to play these games that I play. That's then I'm like, what? Yeah. Well, because my whole thing is like, it's not that you shouldn't be able to to play them. It's that you're obviously on a PC. Get your ass in front of your mouse and keyboard and learn how to do it. Is really that's that's really the message. As hard assed and hard headed as it might be. Yeah. Be- yeah because why? I because like I said, going back, I feel like aim assist is unfair. Like. You you would feel right like me saying that to you. That's on you probably feel that that's unfair of me to say like go learn that input. But why at the, the other side on the other the other side of that coin is why is it why is it not unfair for me to have to deal with aim assist you know on the other side of the screen because I'm getting shit on. I kid you not by kids who are just as skilled as I am, and the only reason they're winning these fights is they have aim assist on their side. Okay, I swear to what God. Because would... remember, like I said, my buddy Gav is pred. Right. Is pred and I beat him seven times out of eight. That's how powerful aim assist is. He beat me twenty times out of twenty, but I turned around and beat him seven times out of eight. What I would pred. say is that you're taking a choice away. Where I'm saying you can use whatever you want. Why don't you can use a controller if it's that big of a deal? Why not just use it? That's I guess what I've never understood about the aim assist debate. Just so why don't I you can, use it too? I can so answer CJ that. first. You can CJ snake first it too. And then I, yeah. <laughs> faith up you can think too. Can um, too. <laughs> um the easiest explanation and the easiest choice is because they don't want to that's fair they're 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 headstrong into their own peripherals they spend probably like two three hundred dollars on a keyboard mm-hmm. and they want them you know fluffy or not tactile so they right. feel better about it in their hand right right i again it's just it's their choice. They don't want to do it. Like, if I go to Gads, what do you play Rocket League on? Oh, controller. I switched from MK2 controller. It Was that for a reason? To get better. Because you said it, and my friend Josh said it, and I don't even know how many other people in Discord said it. Said, get on the controller and try it. And it took a couple days to get used to. But I switched from MK to controller on Rocket League. And yeah. I love the Switch. It's not a PC shooter. I get that. It, right. but, but, but it equates. Yeah, no. it's the it's the Please. same. It's easier on it's controller, not. so do it on controller. That's why you do it on controller. It's it's it's, it equates. It equates. It's not the same because here's the here's the thing. All right, so oh my, I wish I don't know if I have. I don't think I have footage of me trying to do this shit on controller on Apex. It's it's bad. So I want to I want to do two things. All right, so first I want to backtrack. Um, my buddy oh, Skyline oh. dude is in chat and he says he loves he loves the idea. He said input for the podcast quote. For attorneys specifically, they should have a controller only, M and K only, and a mixed bracket. End quote. So he likes the idea. Yeah, yeah, like, no, that's a great idea. idea. Yeah. Absolutely, hundred percent. Um, but I, I want to say like, so switching over to controller from M and K, um, when you're not used to it, isn't easy. I don't think controller no. necessarily is easier. It goes both ways. But here's because you both ways, right? You got you got to get used to the new input. Um, what I would really have to do is i'd have to really buckle down i think at least in terms of apex um because i used to play the old modern warfare 2 on controller and Mm. i smoked modern warfare 2 because that's that's back when i was playing it on ps3 ps4 i don't remember right but you also got to realize back then amos wasn't amos wasn't even strong in those games it It really wasn't no i don't even know but i'm gonna say like i used to play the only way you could tell with amos was with snipers like that was the biggest thing 
You know what Nowadays, my jam was? What? I so I loved hardcore mode. A lot of my friends fucking gave me shit for doing hardcore for Corey. Ah, see, <laughs> I no, loved hardcore. Fun. I loved hardcore. You know what I would do? I would put an ACOG scope on a foul and headshot yeah. people all day yeah. because it's it, it one shot like a sniper rifle, but you didn't have the recoil. Indeed. And I got so many nukes and dubs off of a foul with an ACOG on hardcore mode. I fucking loved that shit. The thing was nuts in that game. And the fire, oh, they had no fire cap. You could you could absolutely. Just beat the uh, shit out of that trigger, and it would shoot as fast as you could shoot. That shit. Oh, that was. I loved the old Modern Warfare Two. It was so good. It was um, good. I w- I'm gonna keep this question in mind. I'm gonna hold on to it. Um, what was I gonna actually fuck? I lost what I was gonna say. Well, we were talking about the switch, right? So, um, what I'd have to do is if I was gonna switch to controller, because I actually got so fed up. Like all of this, like should really give you guys an idea of how what kind of headspace I'm in due to how terrible you know, aim assist is at this level in Apex specifically. Like, if I'm that fed up to rant and rave and say there should be complete segregation or get the input off the game entirely if you can't make an aim assist that's fair, like, that's how bad it is. That's how mad a lot of people are. That's how mad it's made me. To make a mad statement like that, that's how mad it's made me. But I tried, I was actually considering, I was like, listen, like, I'm going to try going hybrid at least because I know there are a couple of hybrid Mm -hmm. players and that's why I was like, I got on my alt account. I went into the firing range. I, I like messed around trying with different sensitivities, per optic, you know, the ADS, like all that stuff. Sure. And I couldn't get the sensitivity right, the specifically like the vertical sensitivity to, to really control the recoil. Like, so to answer your question on why don't M and K players switch to controller, it's the ultimate question. I mean, the ultimate answer. And I think. At least this is true of me. I don't know how many people I could speak for or how many people I've even realized that this is probably a truth for them and probably just can't like like express it. Mm-hmm. But if someone who used controller as a main input turns to me and say, why not just switch to controller? You should do it. You should do it. What you're ultimately asking of me is I've been playing Apex since a little bit since season seven is where I started. I played like 30 something games in season seven. It just went more and more and more sure. since then. I got super hardcore into it by season nine. I, I jumped into ranked. I went from gold to plat to diamond. I've been diamond, what, uh, the last three out of four seasons. Uh, 11, 12, not 13, because 13 sucked. And then again on 14. Mm-hmm. Here we are in 15. Um, So two years, right? It's, wait, no, three years? Two years, three years I've been playing? So for someone to say, switch your input, go to controller, You're basically asking me to start over from scratch, to take that two or three years, whatever it's been, Mm -hmm. throw that out the window, go be a noob again and start over. And and to to look ahead and be like, I have to redo all of that and I have to get better faster so I can get back to where I am now on a different input. That it's that's kind of an unfair request. But that's literally what you're asking me to do. Yeah. That's literally your point is you should yes. get on mouse and keyboard, get off controller, get on mouse. Keyboard. That's literally your point. And I that's wanted fair. you to come to that, that realization is, <laughs> that's is fair. that and you want me fair. to ditch what I know and love and what I've used for 20 years to, to use the input that you want me to use because you're using it. And I don't think that that's fair. That's fair. I think, I think it's a good point. Okay. Okay. So now we're all on an even lane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we all got there at some point. I think, we did it. I think, I think the, I think the <laughs> ultimate agreed upon, uh, you know, point at, at this point, at this juncture is that we all think that if there's going there to be, be separate lobbies, there should be separate there lobbies. There should be. Either that or fix the fucking aim assist. Like I really wouldn't have that big of a problem. Cause they, so CJ, you probably know the answer to this. I mean, Drew, you might too. Cause I don't fully understand, but people talk about when they say aim assist, so aim assist set, Point four, point five, point six. I have no fucking clue what that means. It's the strength. It's the strength. So, all right, yeah, so strength. So, can you, can you elaborate on that? Like, what does that mean exactly? All right, so... Like, how much magnetism, I guess you can say, it has towards your target? So, like, on a controller, it's a, um, it's a gyro, basically. Think about it like that. Mm-hmm. Right. right? It, the, the further away from the target you are, that's when that multiplier kicks in. So if you're to the left by, like, if we go by pixels, a thousand pixels to the left, the game will register that as a actual, like, you're on the target and move you over those thousand pixels. 
it also depends on the strength of the aim assist itself. So 0.25 would be a shorter distance. You can look at that as more of like a uh, linear uh, aim assist setting on Call of Duty. The biggest one was Black Ops. That was the one that would be snappy while people were jumping and really close to you. So it that all has to do with the distance at which aim assist applies? Is that what you're saying? From the target, not from where you are to the target, but where your crosshair right. is. To so the your target. distance yeah. off of the target, yes. where their hitbox yes. begins. Because yes. I didn't know, I had no idea what, what you meant by that either. I didn't, I had never heard of point four, so, point six, or anything. Okay, so my phone is this this close, right? Sure. You have your reticle looking like right here. Okay. The game thinks you're you meant to look at look at this mm -hmm. so it would just move your crosshair over but the further away you are the stronger uh it, it tends to feel on certain aim assist settings hey drew did you see those handsome guys in the reflection it was pretty yeah, good right, right? Oh, that yeah, was, yeah. right? so big ass green dudes. square <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about like call of duty pros they run now they run default default and uh dynamic aim response curve which is different um that is basically how sensitive your joystick is it resets your dead zone in the game basically mm -hmm. um that's really about all that aim assist does it doesn't like a lot of people say it aims for you it's a it's a legal aim bot mm -hmm. because all you gotta do is barely hold the stick right it it's not true at all. I mean, you definitely have to hold your stick and aim, but I do think it's a soft aim bot, at least in Apex. I don't know about COD. And the thing is, like, I've been running games in COD, and I'm, but you're I, also I'm, honestly, I'm running at a, I, I must be running at a high level. I'm not playing like team deathmatch either, so I guess a lot of competitive players are probably over in in Modern Warfare Two specifically, multiplayer, Larry, multiplayer yeah. not so much in Battle Royale. But I mean, well, you get you get a good I, amount of competitive players in Battle Royale. But I mean, I'm I'm probably over a two KDR in in uh in in cod in warzone and i'm not even a one in apex so i don't know what apex is doing but they're doing something it wrong. sounds like an apex problem maybe not an aim assist problem <laughs> maybe maybe know. maybe you should ditch apex buy call of duty play I, I, the multiplayer i mean you've seen me ditch in apex for the most part i've barely played it this season i'm t i'm over it man a lot of people are We'll say I saw you playing Minecraft. You were playing DMZ. DMZ is really fun. They did a really good it job with so that mode. I and, hate uh, the difficulty update. That's like my biggest gripe about it right now. Talking about, but I think it should be hard. If because what it is is supposed to rival, maybe not rival Tarkov, Tarkov but it's supposed to be in parallel with it. Where Tarkov an, is, the bots in Tarkov are really difficult. They're assholes. And the game's insane. And I I don't mind the bots being more difficult. I do think that there's a point where you're getting four shotgun bots and you just stand no chance. <laughs> but like for the most part, I haven't had an issue with it. I, I no. really like what they did. It's a really nice change. I liked Tarkov and that style, like genre, like that sim. Tarkov's great. It's, but it's mm -hmm. so unforgiving. And that, is. that, and that's where Call of Duty I knew would succeed in that aspect because it's already an arcade shooter. They, they know how to, deal with what i'll we'll call it the casual because i just wouldn't put the time into tarkov to learn there's there's you have to have a spreadsheet for ammo like that's oh, that yeah, is yeah, nuts yeah. i remember that's so I, much so to ask, and i just wasn't willing to to do go that hardcore into it so i was really happy that call of duty did the dm the dmc stuff I, now, i've been saying for a while that tarkov needs a competitor and i love that cod did it yeah what are you gonna say yeah. cj are you guys excited for the 15th the raids. What's the, the raids. I mean, I am excited for the raids. It's gonna. Well, be I cool. haven't heard anything. What you so so, Call of Duty announced that there's another mode coming to the Warzone DMZ universe called raids. Okay. It's a three person, multi hour long, Mission. sort of like Destiny raids. So like GTFO that, almost. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's so, yeah. fucking awesome. It's gonna be cool, man. I'm pretty excited. That's cool. Like, so for this one, people are saying that's how you unlock the new Chimera, which is a honey badger from old Call of Duties. Yes. And it's just it's I the trailers look really good. It's gonna be cool. Really good. 
And it's also a, a break point from the campaign missions mm. also. So it, it, it'll lead up to the next campaign. Yeah, they're definitely taking a note from Riot with all the integrations of story and lore and everything going throughout everything, which is a good idea. I think it may build for a better lifetime because it's a series like where Riot yeah. has like individual installments. We have a series and to see that mm -hmm. like the stories going through the series and like intertwine between Warzone and, and the next game and raids and like have all of it be intertwined, I think is really cool. Oh, yeah, like Riot did it. I mean, I, I don't know how much of an impact, you know, what, you know, Marvel even did between their TV and movies, but mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are seeing yeah. integration work. EVE Online did it with uh, that and EVE, what was it, like 513, I think it was called. Yeah, like that's that. funny, dude. I just saw a TikTok about that, about mm -hmm. a dude had to, like, he was like, find this video game in this movie. It was from, like, John Wick, and it was that game. <laughs> it was, it was, it's, that was I'm dope. like, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right on. But like shit like that, like I think it's I think it's awesome. I I do. I love that kind of crossover stuff and the expansions of universes. And I mean, even like Apex with Titanfall going into Apex yeah. as well. You know, like things like that. I think I think expansions of universes are uh, they're fantastic. I love seeing storylines evolve. What's up, yes. CJ? Uh, here's a hot take for you guys. I feel like Apex should not have been out. I feel like Titanfall three should have came out, and they should have built a, a BR around it. I think they should do both. Kind of like, no. kind of like what War, like what COD's doing right now with coming out with Modern Warfare Two and then and releasing Warzone. the BR beside it. No, no, no. I think what they should have done was more along the lines of the black, uh, blackout route with Mon Black Ops Four. Yeah, was that not the same thing as what they're doing now? Well, no, Warzone? it wasn't two. It wasn't two games. It wasn't a single player multiplayer, and then blah. It was just multiplayer and blackout. That's what they should have done during that time frame instead of releasing just a br yeah i think titanfall 3 because that when did apex come out you said two years ago 2019 no no apex came out in 2017 i think it it's been out for five years no way no i think it's 2019 it came out it's a three-year-old right game and i came in like a year year so and if they three, so. if they release that in 2020 I think, I think it was they, March 2019, if I'm not mistaken. I February that, 4th, 2019. Okay. Oh, I was so fucking close. It was really close. close. Yeah, he was yeah, a month off. <laughs> I think if they come out with that in 2020, pre Cold War, I think it wipes Cold War. Titanfall 3, I think wipes Cold War. I think people got nostalgic for Titanfall when the servers were just worthless to play. Like, well, people that was because of a whole group it. of people just DDoSing the servers. Well, yeah, that wasn't great, but I think people, we didn't, we like, I think people like the futures, the advanced movement is what they called it. The wall running and the jumping. I think people like that more than they understood, especially in the beginning when they especially first. Especially at the time. Yeah. I don't think they realized it while they were in it, but once the, we lost it, I feel like a lot of people were like, damn, I kind of miss, you know, wall so, running and, and flying basically. Talking about yeah. wall running and. Uh, like like boosting and all that i didn't like how call of duty did it at first at with, all with advanced warfare with advanced warfare and then going into black ops 3 black ops 3 had a better way of doing it aw but it still was wasn't so a abrupt bro like you were just boom 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 there was no smoothness to i it want at you all. in my all, room to spend the night all together abrupt all abrupt movement. <laughs> i think iw um, did it the best personally Advanced movement wise, yes. The one game that did it really well was Titanfall. Yeah. Titanfall's advanced movement was really good for the time. Yeah. And yeah. that's the one thing that I really wish that they implemented more into Apex. Definitely not just like the abilities. Certain people can fly, certain people have a jump pad, sure. certain people. I wish they implemented more of the wall running, stuff like that. I feel like Gads would have really enjoyed uh apex even more if they in involved that because i feel like i, I feel think like og apex did have it like way back in the beginning they took the titanfall wall running and had it in there because the, the r5 apex reloaded aim trainer that i have has wall running in it oh hmm. so i think for the first i think season maybe zero one and maybe two had it and then they got rid of it well you're a techie person so I, I feel like you would be able like you do wall bounces you tap strafe you have cats? to when you How get many? to my level. No, you, you don't. You don't have to. 
You don't have have to do dick. You just have to have to learn Mm -hmm. how to aim and shoot. No, when you get to a diamond level, you have to wall bounce. You have to start tap strafing. Well, you you got to break cameras. Yeah, that that's that that's the gist of it. If you don't get your camera broken, right? If you can keep on target, you, you don't have to worry about movement. I think movement is way more important in that game specifically. Oh yeah, Apex absolutely. I'm just uh, much more to... than Call of Duty is this year. This year they slowed it down a lot. They oh yeah, they really hurt the the zoomers. Yeah, the uh, the cracked out G fuel fuel teenage. Yeah. That's Drop okay. Out. Well, that's being so. What are your thoughts on SBMM? Oh yeah, that is actually a good question. With you being um, a competitive person, so I, I can, can again, I can, I can speak towards how how Apex does their skill based matchmaking. I can't speak to how other other games do it actually at all. Sure. So, my cat's hair just went everywhere. Um, yeah, Apex's skill based matchmaking is dog shit. Oh, it's wait, it's wait. terrible. Sorry. I had to sneeze I, and then I... I didn't. <laughs> it was awful. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. So Apex's skill-based matchmaking is it has to be one of the worst in the industry, which is not surprising at all because it's EA that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, so what they do, this again, a guy like went in and did a a study um on his he basically used himself as a guinea pig and entered himself into 500 games. Um and he tracked his KDR. Um and then I I don't remember all the metrics he used because I, I was reading this probably two months ago. Sure. Um, somehow he also gathered um, some of the players, like the information of the players he was playing against, like who was in the lobby, uh, their levels, you know, their stats, whatever. The gist of it is what he found was that Apex match makes in two ways. Um, the first way is Perfect. it mixes and matches the whole lobby to create a lobby average KDR. Okay. That's what it does. So that's why if you ever see people like on TikTok or YouTube or whatever, you're watching a streamer and they're like, maybe they're a mid player, maybe they're a bot or brand new to the game. And they're like, why the fuck am I playing, you know, a, a pubs game with, a 60,000 kill Wraith in here that's like eight times Pred or something. Like, why is this even happening? It's because he might, maybe he has like a one or one and a half KDR, but there are also a bunch of bots in the bot, in the lobby that have maybe like a 0.4. And this Pred's in the lobby now with like a a six and somewhere there's some average in the middle that's like a a 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 KDR lobby. Um, The other thing that they do is it also weights your matchmaking based on your like most recent 10 games. So let's say you have like three games in a row where you absolutely pop off and you had like a five kill game, a seven kill game, and like a six kill game. Like your next game, you, they're basically going to make sure that you have some Preds in your lobby for probably the next like 10 games. Right. You're you're going to probably be in lobbies with Preds in your match to like put you your own KDR over that average of 10 span games back to where, you know, your lifetime average is at. Sure. So that's the two ways that Apex does it. I think it's garbage. What... There are two things that I think Apex could potentially do to improve, at the very least, their their pubs environment. Because I think with skill based matchmaking, I mean, your rank is your rank. If you're going in, like that's your skill based matchmaking, right? Like that's it, right? For ranked, for pubs, I think what they should do is create essentially windows or ranges of KDRs, and that's the only sole criteria that they should, yeah, of that um, KDR. Of that KDR. So say like from zero, yeah, from like zero to like 0.5 and then 0.51 to like 0.75 and then 0.76 to like one, like one point, whatever. And then one point, whatever to three and then everything over three question, something, something to that effect. Would that not create the same effect as them going for, so say you do a zero point, a zero to a 0.5. Well, mm-hmm. that matchmaking would just be the average of a 0.25 KD. When not that the, like the same idea? Because you're going to have people up way above that and way below that. You know what I'm saying? Well, so I'm thinking is, so uh, obviously people do pre-made squads, right? So mm-hmm. if you're going to do a pre-made squad, you take the average of that squad sure, and you stick it in the bracket, like whatever bracket it falls into. So if a pre-made squad has an average KDR 
of you know 1.5 then you put them in whatever that 1.5 bracket that it mm -hmm. falls into if they have a an average of 0.74 you put them in whatever bracket that that 0.74 falls in so you create brackets probably four because i feel like obviously if you make too many brackets then you're going to have issues with populating servers right and probably matchmaking times are going to take too long so I honestly think maybe no more than four brackets. They would obviously have the information on the back end to find out how many brackets are probably appropriate. Yeah. But you'd need to find some balance between, you know, where's the matchmaking time going to be appropriate? And then also how are we skill-based matchmaking right. fairly? And I think like a sub one, like somewhere around one, probably like a, what, probably a half or less, and then something between half and around one, a one, two, a three, somewhere in there, and then a three sure. and above. So and the three and above are probably going to have the highest matchmaking times, but yeah. it is what it is. So what I was saying was how you said that he went in and he did this testing and he says that they get a lobby of an average KD, right? Yeah. That's what they currently do. That is the same idea of doing, say, 0.5 to 1. That bracket is just an average of a 0.75 KD. It's the same idea. It's the same concept. Right, but the thing is, in, in this thing, is like you're not taking someone with an 8 KDR and putting them in the same lobby with someone as a point. So you're saying that they're, they're what their bracket now is just their brackets too big now. Yeah. Their is bracket, what... there is the bracket is everything right okay, now. That, okay. <laughs> like okay, I said, okay. their bracket okay. is everything. And what I'm saying is they need to take the bracket and do like three small brackets, brackets or four, okay. sm four small brackets. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's why I was just like, overall it's the same concept, but you're saying you just need, they need to make them smaller sections. instead. That's of... probably a better way to put it. Yeah. Cause yeah, the bracket so like is three everything. To five. Well, instead so, of it being from like a point was, five to a, a six, be a zero to a point five, a point five to one, like yeah, smaller in intervals yeah, yeah. of brackets. That, okay, okay. I was just exactly. wondering, like SBMM, and because there's a lot of people that are against it, and I know that you don't play a lot of casuals, like you're mostly competitive. But I play most of what I play is casual, and I don't mind skill based matchmaking. I think that you are around people your level. So if you're bad, you're going to want to play bad people. And I feel like the people that don't agree that skill-based matchmaking should be in the game are just looking to shit on people. Like exactly. they're not, they're not looking to have the accountability of I'm not playing people in my skill rank. I'm playing people mm -hmm. that are worse than me and they want that all the time. And I think DMZ specifically mm -hmm. um, has shown us how you can have kind of like a BR style of game and still make it fun because yeah, I was thinking, sure. I said probably two months Prior to this new COD being released, I said, maybe, I said, maybe the key to appeasing everyone, right? Because I think what you said is absolutely true. And I actually have a Twitter post on this because a bunch of people, when the skill-based matchmaking conversation happened, you had a bunch of high-level players saying, oh, SBMM sucks, like mm -hmm. blah, 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 whatever. And I said, literally the people who are complaining the most are the people at the top who just want bots to shit on for their clips. Yep. So what I was thinking was I said, maybe the solution is to put AI in casual matches and have them be like half decent at the game, you know, kind of like DMZ is now. And then DMZ came out and I felt yeah. like it was, it was complete confirmation, um, especially before. And, and I, I want to touch on this too, is the reason I said, oh, I was going to say earlier that I hated the difficulty update is it kind of ties into this discussion, right? Because people are going into casuals, especially in Apex, and want a casual experience. They don't want to sweat their ass off. They don't want to run into 60,000 kill rates and 90,000 kill fucking horizons. They don't want to mm -hmm. do it anymore. So what I was thinking was, you know, why not just have casual in an arena where, you know, we like I said, you have the smaller brackets, but also throw some AI in there. Because if you want someone to dunk on... You preserve the experience of players, especially low-level players, when they're not getting absolutely dunked on people who've been playing since, year, like, season zero, you know? By putting them in a lobby of their peers, everyone gets a lobby of their peers, but throw in AI in there and maybe weight the difficulty, like, even just a little bit. So you put absolutely, like, brain-dead AI in the rookie lobbies, and then yeah. they get a little harder and a little harder. And they don't have to be the hardest thing in the, like, the cracked lobbies, the one that we were saying, like, the, sure. that are, like, the three KDR lobbies and up. But, like, the DMZ, like, when we go into DMZ and we face those, like, three-plate assholes that, like, never miss a shot, and you're, like, yeah. putting a full mag of your M4, and you're finally, like, you need, like, three headshots. Of, like, put yeah. those kind of guys in Apex, like, using their abilities, have, like, really good intuition, like, know where you are, can hit their shots. Like, put those guys in the sweat line. Because you know these three-plus KDR players are still going to dunk on those AIs, yeah. and they're going to get their clips, but they're still going to be challenged because they're going to be hit hard by yeah. some of the shots that they won't miss. 
And so I, the, I think that is the solution to SBMM in pubs in Apex specifically. So that's my take. They did that with Titanfall. Did they? Yeah, and it didn't really work out. I didn't play Titanfall. Oh, I don't well. know if I say unfortunate. Yeah. So is that Titanfall one or two or both or what they do? Both, both. They always both. they had AI in the game itself in the multiplayer matches. Yeah, but it's not the same as what he's saying. What they had in Titanfall was the equivalent of like grunts in Halo being in your game, and they would count as XP and points. Where what he's okay. talking about is having actual, like Fortnite does with say you go into Fortnite on a brand new account, you're gonna run into probably fifty percent bots, literal AI yeah. that are not controlled by a human, but they're there so you're not getting railed by Nick Merckx and and you know. So I, I understand, and I think that that is a good idea for Apex. I, I don't think it translates to like multiplayer Call of Duty as well. No, that's what I was. But I do, I do think it works in in the Apex arena. I could, I could. Speaking of Apex arenas, your thoughts? Because that's really the most of what I played of Apex, and I really enjoyed that. Um, I advocate for people playing arenas a lot because, yeah. especially, well, especially if, um. You know, if you're trying to play competitively and you want to become better at the combat aspect of the mm -hmm. game, because if you're dropping in BR, right, you, whether you hot drop or not, you have to go through the drop process, you have to go through the loot process, go through the fight process. Let's say you win your first fight, you have to wait X amount of minutes, yeah. you know, you maybe you hot drop, maybe five shots too far, exactly, you get less engagements, that's, that's the perfect shortcut to where yeah. I'm going with it. Um, if you play a 20 minute match, you might take three, four fights total, you know. Yeah. Uh, over a 20 minute span but if you're in arenas it's forced engagement you you queue in you grab your loadout from the menu force combat right away rounds yeah. over you start over it's match 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 a minute at a time you go back to lobby you start the process again over that 20 minute span you might mm -hmm. get 15 to 20 fights versus just the three or four you got in br yeah. so what i what i teach people because i don't know if you've been to my tiktok or not i do a, a bronze to diamond yeah. guide on apex that's how my tiktok took off and one of the things I said is if you're looking to get your combat skill up, because combat is an aspect of BRs, it's one of the many aspects of BRs we got to improve at in order to climb, mm -hmm. um, go practice in arenas. Go do it. Get get used to the guns you're not used to. Get used to yeah. the recoil, the weapons. Get used to positioning. Get used to, you know, calling out, you know, your call outs when you got to heal, um, how to flank, how to fend off flanks, when to use your abilities and how, sure. like all this stuff. Like arenas is great for helping you master the combat scenario. Because it's constant yeah. repetitions in that aspect. So. I, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think that that is... Like, I don't play a lot of Apex, but, like, just understanding how BRs work, I think it's a good, like, training ground, right? Especially, like, learning guns that you don't know and timings of things and, and trying to figure... I think, yeah, I agree with that. CJ? Oh. Um, you good? You just, you're off I'm in the zoned space. out for a second. Okay, man. Yeah, no, I was reading something about something else. Skyline says, why is it that I go crazy on arenas and not so much on regular BR? Because in BR, you have downtime. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing is with like the engagements, the engagements are the most stressful part of, of the game. So when you go into arenas, you are, uh, you are, um, you're practicing. You're making first. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I'm forget. I'm, I'm missing the word that I'm trying to use here, but you're exposing yourself essentially to the most stressful aspect mm -hmm. over and over and over and over again, repetitively. So oh, it is going to make you go crazy, especially if you're if you're sweating for the dub, which isn't always going to you're not always going to get it because the people in arenas are are very talented. Um, there are a lot of really talented like gun uh, fighters in, in arenas sure. for sure. But in BR, like you go in, you like we said, you drop, you fight and you might have a few minutes to just chill and loot and rotate and all that. You get downtime before those stress stress receptors kick in again yeah. and all the stress chemicals go crazy in your brain. Like you get you get a break. But um if you See, if you're in a mindset to do arenas you should okay so arena you you advocate for it because you think it makes you better at the game or better with aim better at the combat aspect of the game because okay. obviously if you're playing arenas because it's literally just an arena it's not the full br yeah. it's not going to teach you rotations or it's not going to teach you movement. br strategy yeah. you know there there are aspects of the greater br game you know that that have manifested over the course of all the br games over over all the years you know that are just inherent to that mode that game yeah. mode that you won't learn in other game modes i feel um, like arena as, is more like the gulag 
a little bit. Well, I mean, Arena is basically TDM in from yes. Counter Strike or Rainbow Six. It's, it's or more like Warzone. It, it, it's more like Search without planning a bomb because you only got one life. It's the casual, casual game mode. In Apex. well, why wouldn't it be TDM? It's one team versus another team, and the first to wipe the other wins. Because the one life. death match, yeah, that's why death match really normally death means match. you have a, a score limit, in it, not not multiple rounds. Yeah. I get what you're saying. It's 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 just yeah. It's just point point and shoot. I see what you're saying. Done. Yeah, it's just single life TDM. I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah, the objective sense, is yeah. to kill the yeah. other team. There is no other objective. There's just no sure. no respawn until the next round. Like you lose a round. I see. What you're I saying. like it. It's a unique kind of game mode because it's it's not necessarily TDM. It's not necessarily search, but it's got aspects of both. And I I like it. It's probably my favorite part of Apex. Just because I don't know the legends and I don't know how all the guns work and all the I really don't know them like I don't know anything about it. So when I do play Apex, it's typically arenas, but it's it is really fun. Um, yeah, I enjoy it. I should I honestly should play more arenas. I just don't. Yeah, I should, especially since uh, the aim and combat aspect. Like right now, that's what I'm working on. It's it's definitely what I've identified as as the weakest part of my game and the thing that's preventing me from hitting masters right now. Sure. And that's why I'm I'm kind of frustrated and why I'm kind of on apex overload right now. Um and kind of just taking a step back, taking a little break and try to trying to like reassess where I want to go as a competitive apex player, where I want to go as a streamer, mm-hmm. you know, content creator, all that kind of stuff. That's why sure. and, and I'm also really enjoying, you know, the new Warzone. I really am enjoying Warzone 2 and DMZ and I'm putting content out and people are liking the DM and doing where are the DMZ keys. Yeah. Um on uh on tiktok right now people are loving that so i mean it's i'm almost stretching myself too thin between the cod and the apex and the rocket league and i guess this week the minecraft and everything else it's a lot but i think i'm coming to the conclusion that i'd rather be a better content creator than a better competitive gamer sure so we'll see we'll see where things take me i want to say something in regards to that six months ago you would have had the reverse mindset I'm growing as a person. And I am happy for you That's because good. you are figuring it out. That's good. So, I mean, the the highlights of the conversation we just had, like overall during this podcast was at mm-hmm. first, aim assist bad, mouse and keyboard good. Now we're under the assumption that they're both good. Segregate the, the competitive lobbies, not the casual lobbies. Yeah, into keyboard and mouse or controller or mix. Yeah. One, Allow the choice. One of the three. Allow the choice. Um, after that, we went into uh, bots and or did we talk about aim assist fully? We we did, right? Yeah, we talked about aim assist pretty in pretty in depth. Pretty in depth. Yeah. I think the okay. only thing I didn't cover or the thing that I didn't bring up in terms of aim assist is I, I think I've said this to you before, CJ's there is a way to build aim assist that I've heard of that basically, instead of what Apex does, which is like use aim assist like a magnet that draws the crosshair to the player when you're in a certain range. I've heard some developers have done it where they do a, a DPI slowdown within that range instead. And apparently that's been successful in the past and players have liked that method. I don't so know. I'm not only... familiar with it. I'm not even sure if I've used it before, but... The, the only problem with like a DPI slowdown is you can't look at a joystick and say it's going 900 DPI or 300 DPI. Cause it's very because, how fast you yeah, move. Yeah. It, it, it's based on doing this. You can move that's it about a it. quarter inch or a whole inch and in like anywhere in between there. I don't really know the different builds of the aim assist. I just use it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, I would I mean, like to see what that feels like. I, w- I would love to, you know, get behind a controller and be like, all right, what does the this so DPI I, method look like? Right. So now I have a challenge like. for you. Me? Go find a on, game that on, does that. No, no. I, well, I don't have a game that will allow you to change the whatever input. I want you to play Call of Duty, specifically Call of Duty, not Apex. I want you to play DMZ on a controller for a week and see if uh. your mindset changes. In terms of what, uh, just how the controller feels in general? 
how how it feels, how easy it was to do certain things, what you hated the most. And I, I want to see if any of your opinions change within a week. That's all. So I can tell you, at least in terms of what I was uh, experiencing with controller on Apex the other day, is it had to do with, um, I guess it'd be the dead zone, right? Because mm -hmm. if I'm looking around... Um, Wrong stick, but okay. No, it's le well, remember, I'm reversed <laughs> here, so I'm reversed. This is my left. If I'm looking around, I mean, if, if it helps you... <laughs> if the right stick looks around, your left stick moves around. Does it? Yeah. Right, left? Left yeah, stick is like so. strafe. Right stick is look. Look. Yes. Right right, yeah, right, right stick controls your yeah. head. Left stick controls your body. So if I'm looking around, I'm, uh, if I'm looking around, it's like, I don't know if it's the acceleration or what that I'm trying to get used to or trying to figure out what the setting is for, but there's this little section, I guess, outside of the center mm -hmm. that is kind of slow. And then you start getting some some tension on the joystick, and right in that tension area, it starts speeding up. And if you max it out, then it like wiles out. Yeah. And you gotta like train yourself or get used to. It. I can't think this also comes with what you said. So, just like I hate the curve, and it's like that tension yeah. messes with me a little bit. I wish it was kind of smoother. The you can S change curve. It. I I gotta Especially I gotta figure speed. it out. Yeah, I, I gotta I, figure it out. The one thing that everybody says is like, if it offers dynamic, use it. It's a inverse S curve. So mm -hmm. instead of being um, faster going out, it's a little bit slower going out and faster going in. So you got, yeah, it, it, that's it. There, look in your Steam settings, especially if you're going to be playing on Steam. Mm -hmm. So uh, have you guys played Gundam Evolution? No. Uh, that's Quake, except Gundam. I have not. It's Overwatch except Gundam. Uh, no. But, I, well, I love it. I think it's great. But uh, the reason I bring it up is because, um, so it's not cross-platform. And this kind of goes back to our old conversation. Mm -hmm. I had to hop on to my Xbox to play with one of uh, one of my buddies who I've known for 20 plus years. Sure. Um, we played a few games. I was absolutely god awful. It was the worst. <laughs> yeah, you would have been laughing your ass off at me. Of course. He took like a 10 minute break. I went into the firing range just playing with whatever they call the ALC settings. Because in Apex, it's called ALC, Advanced Look Controls. They call it something else in, in Gundam, whatever. Um, but instead of setting like the different sensitivities, they had like bars for everything like your your vertical look, your horizontal look, you know, your ADS when you're vertical and when you're scoped and horizontal and vertical, the curves, like. All right. that stuff. I went through every single one. I ended up doing linear. I dropped all the sensitivities down, went into the next games, and I was actually like clapping on controller after I did those. And that's the thing. Maybe I should go back and inset like into Apex and try it with the ALC settings instead of just doing the normal like you know here's your look sensitivity, right. here's your ADS sensitivity. I'll try. I'll try out with the ALC and see what now, that's like. Are you using a pro style controller? God, I was about to with ask back him, paddles. Man. I was, was going to no. ask you what controller you use. Just, just a regular just, Xbox. Just, How do you do it? Yeah. Well, because I, I mean, I well, because I mainly just play Rocket League on the yeah, controller. Yeah. So I mean, even with Rocket League, I can contest having back paddles really doesn't do dick. Um, especially, well, most people Look, don't more use their paddles. I I've, I've, I just play however it's comfortable, and I'm a fucking wood too. Yeah. I well, you're gold four, three, yeah three. I'm not gold ranked. three almost black. Yeah, this you are. This is all speculation. It, no, no, no. My programs tell me what rank. Stop you are. cheating. It, I'm not cheating. Anyway, on Rocket League, I have to play claw. It, it it's unreal, and I feel like Justin, this guy, not Justin, our other Justin, when he plays Rocket League. A different way so he can get away with having not a pro controller sure he doesn't use his triggers he uses just his joystick to move his car oh yeah like a so rc he, car like yeah right okay or did you change that justin so oh you, no, you no, push no. So, forward to go forward yeah. and pull back to go back like an rc Correct. car like an rc yeah. car okay that makes and sense. you don't have to the, use your triggers the only yeah the only drawback that i've experienced from that is obviously when you're turning since you're not pushing full forward you lose some of your momentum yeah. um but you can counter that with an e-brake and maybe like tapping the boost a little bit it's boost, not the biggest yeah. deal in the world but i like it 
Um, it just feels more natural that Fluid. way. Sure. Yeah. It does. It's like how you and works. then and then that way I can use my bumpers for I use my bumpers for uh, air roll, and then okay. this triggers boost, so I don't have to worry about that. My B. I don't even remember what B is off the top. Probably of air roll. It probably is. It's just yeah. like a useless button. So Drew has no but idea. Yeah, no idea. That's how I do. I I always reconfigure every every game that I play. I take off defaults, and I'm like, what makes most sense to me in my mind? Sure. What feels most aesthetically pleasing? You play inverted? No, God, no. Oh God. Okay. No. Never. I was gonna say anybody only... named Justin that plays. My inverted? Justin does. <laughs> and yes. The only, He's yeah, only just one. flight games. If I'm playing like Top Gun or something like that, or War Thunder, I'll, sure. I'll do obviously inverted for because it makes sense to do that. Yeah, but, but other than that, no inversion. Was there any more questions that Drew specifically had to ask, or did no, did, did you get? I like the you got plentiful answers. Yeah. Fun. I like I the like conversations we had. Yeah. So my buddy so, probably D's said. Um, Going back to the SBMM, he says you can use machine learning, uh, a machine learning algorithm to make the perfect value for skill based matchmaking. I, so, I believe that's right because I mean, AI is incredible. Yeah, yeah. I'm but sure at the same can. time, like any irregularity in your gameplay would cause that the AI to think something either extreme happened or you went negative. 42. I think it would God just forbid. adjust accordingly. And the next game, it would put you in a lower SBMM and then you would do better and you'd go to a higher SBMM. And eventually you're going to plateau. I mean, it's, if it's going to take the average, I don't know, whatever metric it uses between wins and kills and your score per minute, you know, all of that, it's going to take whatever metric it uses. I, eventually you're going to average out over the course of a thousand games you'll get a, an average and it, and it'll get to where you're playing roughly the same people yes of course you're going to have outlier games where you go two and 16 but you're also going to have games where you go 36 and four you know and so you're it, it'll eventually just come to an average i don't i don't yeah. mind svmm now but i i would rather it go by ping i think it should go ping yes Stack, yes, absolutely. Like your stack, your party, however many people you have for Call of Duty specifically. I mean, I guess Apex too. Like you shouldn't be playing as a stack of three. Sure, you play. I imagine you play with a three stack. You shouldn't be playing solo queue people. I think that that's crazy, especially in like Tarkov. If you solo queue, I hate fighting four people. You know, that's that's but that satisfaction of one popping every single one of them is is super fun. Oh yeah, not when you got yeah. I've ever once. I don't think I've ever won. I've been playing since either wipe three or wipe four. And I don't think as a solo, I've ever wiped. How many times do you four. wipe? Anyway. Couple. Continue. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I agree. Like there, uh, same thing with, well, I was thinking of that with, with DMZ. I was like, you know, going in as a solo queue player, when there are a bunch of trios in there, not everyone's friendly. Right. You know, I'm not. It's like, I would love if there was like a solo Pretty queue sad. only lobby. That'd yeah. be pretty fantastic. I think that solos should only fight against solos. Duos should only fight against duos. And trios should only fight against trios. I think it makes for a much more fair experience. Yeah, I, I think in DMZ, duos and trios, sticking them in the lobbies isn't that bad. Because a duo can easily wipe a trio. They really can. All you have to do is... Because there are a lot of people in trios that just don't pay attention. And if you're smart enough to find the outlier and take the outlier first, you immediately have a 2v2. You just have to. It's not hope. that hard. You have to hope that the trio is worse than the duo, because the trio, if they're both the same level, right? The trio has three people communicating, where the duo may only have two, and you might have Billy Bob over there just looting everything while you're dying. You yeah. know, yeah. that's that's I think what why I think that it should be duos against duos and trios against trios. That way, it's just overall, it's more fair to everybody. Well, even I would if you say it probably with... is on average more fair, true, but I just I think mean, it's not impossible. Yeah, if you even no, no, went no, in with a duo, hmm? if you went in with a duo, you'd have more teams to fight again. So I mean, more yeah. engagements. If you go, if you go in with a duo, yeah, right, two people per team. Originally, there's three. You get one. I'm not saying per team. I'm saying that you're still. It's still going to be teams of three. A fixed amount of teams, but a fixed amount of but teams. But two, but they're going to be stacks of two in a solo. Uh, what do you well, mean? I guess that really wouldn't work, would it? Because that wouldn't work. Well, no, uh, the way you could other. do it, it was yeah. you could do like a fixed amount of team. Like, say, if we're saying like if you were to mix 
duos and trios together. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess there are a fixed amount of spawn points regardless, right? Because yeah. so it would be a, fi a fixed amount of spawn points means a fixed amount of teams. So either it would be all twos, or even if you match twos and threes, regardless, yeah. there'd be the same amount of teams in it's the like realm. But it, I was gonna say like and yesterday, me and my oh, buddy 60. Red, who's in you know Red CJ uh, out of our yeah, yeah Red yeah. Ha. Like we we run duos into DMZ all the time, and yesterday we were wiping squads of two and three together. And then today, I was actually before he got on, I was filling, I was solo queue filling into matches. I had this guy. Um, I was we were a trio. We wiped the first team. Um, went into whatever village that is that's like halfway underwater. I can't think of it right now off the top mm -hmm. of my head. Whatever the name of it is in the southwest of the map. So we're in there. A duo comes up. This kid's an idiot. He he knows he has no more plates. I have one more plate left and I use it. So like we're all like not at full health. Um this two this duo comes up. You can hear them on public chat mm -hmm. speaking in Spanish. I make the call out, yo, there's an enemy team here. And what does he decide to do with an enemy team right next to us across the street? And all of us low health, he starts opening a safe, which brings in all the heavy AI into the area. He gets be. knocked twice and then finished. Uh, the second guy tries to lift him. He gets finished trying to lift the idiot. And I'm like, you guys are morons. I'm already out of here. So like as a duo, it's really not hard to take out a trio if you know how to take advantage of whatever the hell they're doing wrong. And a lot of people do things wrong. Yeah. Um, I don't think putting duos with trios would really diminish the game all that much, especially since a lot of players are just trying to run keys or run, you know, missions and, and GTFO. I think, Even though there are some squad hunters, but... I think that speaks to my point, though. If you were with a duo fighting that duo, if you were fighting all solos, maybe they would have had the idiot also, right? But since you're a solo <laughs> queue with two morons, you have to fight a team of two that can communicate and work together. They only have one moron. So that's, I, you know what I'm saying? That's, I guess, where I was going with that. Well, I think the two guys I was with were duo because they literally stayed the entire match waiting for me to, like, finagle my way back in to res them. Mm. So I don't really know what they're, they might have been a duo oh, together. Yeah, I imagine, because yeah. if you're they're solo queuing, I imagine they would have just quit as soon as they got full finished. But I don't know. Well, I, I mean, don't. I could be right. I could be wrong. It's really. Yeah, we're not getting no into this. We're gonna save this one for another time. Yeah, we're not gonna talk <laughs> no about more. Well, okay, is our, yeah, yeah. our timeout? No, <laughs> is no. our timeout? No. That we. I mean, what is this like going on? We're an hour and a half. Yeah, hour and a half. What, right now. How long That's are your podcasts the, usually? Between thirty and an hour. There's no time. There's no structure yeah. to any of this. We're just free form. We're just bullshit. We're just vibing. Let's, yeah. Let's let's straight uh, Joe Rogan experience this and go four hours now. Oh, <laughs> right. Christ. <laughs> No, actually, my fiance just got home, so I gotta. Okay. Yeah, I saw the dog soon myself. No worries. The dogs here. The fiance's here. I the think, cats uh, are here. Everybody's here. I thought I was talking about Amanda being the dog. Oh, funny. Oof. I'll let her know you said that. Anyways, <laughs> I think we had a good episode. Um, Gazin, I'll have I'll have all your socials and everything in the description. That way, everybody can come find you and check you out. CJ, yours is always there too. Um, but this has I'm been. Just, are you running this on Twitch as well, or what? I'm not. No, Do I don't live it. Twitch, I just YouTube? I'm recording, and the it'll. Oh, go you just up, record. It'll go up on YouTube and Spotify, Anchor, Apple, Google, all the anywhere you can get podcasts. It'll be there. So that's super cool. Well, that's, if you post the link on uh, on Twitter, be sure to tag me. Absolutely, we'll do. Oh, absolutely. All right, guys, this was a stuff. lot of fun. Uh, we're gonna wrap it up here. I appreciate everybody that watched all the way, and and peace. Have a great Have day, guys. Night, guys. Thank you guys so much. This was a lot of fun.